Hi guys, welcome to the living room once again. Today's guest is a very, very special guest to me. Okay, she's one of my dear friends. I've known her for years. Um, one thing I would say about Noor is, um, Noor is a person, right? She is just very strong. She's very assertive. She knows what she wants and she's not afraid to go and get it. That's, that's Noor. And um, also the fact that she's also... Um, I mean, there's so many amazing qualities about Noor as a person. Like she's feminine, she, she's also equally driven in her career, as well as, um, I mean, right, like there's so many things that I have learned just talking to her. And this today's section is very special because um, I'm going to get Noor to just share her journey of being a single woman all the way to a married woman. So Noor... <laughs> Welcome on board. <laughs> Thanks, Shimon. Oh my goodness. I mean, uh, I must say that, you know, you are my inspiration. I've seen you uh, from before and to the woman who's uh, in front of me right now, you have gone through such an amazing journey yourself. And honestly, I mean, keeping you around in my life has always been very enriching. And I hope that, you know, we can be friends forever. <laughs> because we do need that, that kind of women around us, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me uh, in this uh, wonderful show. Uh, it seems like um, it's definitely an honor uh, considering the, the, the kind of uh, women and personalities that you have uh, speaking in your channel. Uh, and uh, I must say that, you know, I'm pretty nervous <laughs> and uh, I do hope that, you know, I'll be able to share, you know, a little bit of um, uh, my story and hopefully it resonates, you know, with our modern day uh, women out there. You know, I, I do hope that I'm able to share a little bit of um, story here that might actually be um, hopefully a source of inspiration. <laughs> me like um for the viewers right like who is Noor like just to give a bit of a background Noor is actually the meaning of Noor is light actually so um it's Arabic uh and I am I am Muslim uh I am also you know uh, although in Singapore we are considered as part of the Malay uh, Malay uh, group of uh community at the same time you know I am actually Javanese by ethnicity so, you know, there's a little bit of uh, Javanese, uh, you know, background to me, uh, which is actually quite interesting, actually, if I were to go back into, uh, you know, my family tree. Um, I would say that uh, being a minority woman, uh, you know, uh, as well, being Asian, being um, Muslim, you know, it's, it's a very interesting uh, times for us, actually. Uh, you know, and being Singaporean as well, I mean, living in a modern day uh, environment like we are, I mean, we, I must say that it has been quite an interesting journey, uh, you know, for me. And I know that there are so many of us out there right now is trying to navigate through, you know, all this um, meeting people, relationships, you know, being, uh, being the women of the 21st century, um, you know, navigating being a mom, you know, uh, trying to be the best boss, you know, and, you know, everything, being being a mother to your child. And it's, it's just so, so much, you see, that uh, we women are going through right now and our roles are changing. We are also becoming the dads, you know, some of us are also becoming CEOs juggling families I don't know I don't know how some women can actually do it but I've seen them doing it and they are you know the source of my empowerment every single day of my life <laughs> but I must say that yeah um, before we go through all that I think some women are just lucky you know that they can actually you know meet the love of life of their lives you know earlier on in their lives but I must say that you know for me it has been quite a different one a different journey that I have taken you know, to move from being the ultimate single girl um, to being being married, <laughs> which is very unexpected, actually. So, um, uh, it being in the modern day context, you know, it's becoming quite um, apparent that, you know, our channels are evolving. But 
I must say, people hasn't changed that much, you see. So, you know, outside or whether you're meeting people on the internet or social media or through friends, you know, whatever traditional channels or the new channels, people don't change, you see. So, um, basically, the rules of engagement is the same. You just kind of pointed something out, right? Like the, the journey and how the engagement has not changed. I think one of the things that I, I felt that it was like so relevant to have this topic is because there have many there have been many women out there like um uh, in our positions right now like you know we when we have been single we've gone through the uh, jaded experiences of meeting all these people online and then there's a point of time we feel like you know what we're not going to do this anymore we've like totally given up and i think in all the things i realized that even for myself personally or even for no when she was single right it didn't stop her from living her life like she didn't put her life on hold just because she feels like I have no, I'm not in a relationship. I don't have a partner. So like, you know, like just not having a pity party for herself. Instead, what she did was she felt like, okay, you know what? Since this part of my life is moving a little bit slow, maybe let me focus on other parts of my life. Like let me do my career. So what was your, um, like during your journey, right? As a single, single person, right? What, what kept you busy or occupied during that time? I, I think, you know, that it has always been, um, I mean, I've always loved learning, okay? So that's one of the biggest, um, you know, motivating factor in my life is to actually uh, keep learning, keep studying, keep growing, you know? So that is actually very much in tandem with uh, who I am. And I've always, uh, you know, find a way to do that. I mean, even if um, uh, I pursued all my, my master's degree, uh, all the way in Hong Kong, you know, so I spent three years in Hong Kong, despite not being able to speak the language at all, not being able to speak Cantonese. I know a bit of Mandarin and most of the, most of the Hong Kongers, they do speak a little bit of Mandarin. So yeah, I survive with a bit of that and most of it, you know, in English. But, you know, it doesn't stop me, you see, no matter how, um, how challenging it, it could be. But I must say, standing here right now, that I'm glad that, you know, I spent my time doing all those things uh, to upgrade myself, uh, to push myself further. Um, and also, you know, to, to just basically invest more of your time in yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's when you meet somebody, you know, it's about, I know that there's a lot of um, cosmic reasons where the stars align when you meet somebody. But there are so... But this is real life, right? There's so many things that takes a lot of time, you see. And sometimes when you wait for the stars to align, it's going to take a while, you know. It doesn't mean that you want it to happen now. It's going to happen now. So what do you do in the meantime? You're not going to wait around. You're not, you're, because this is your one life that you live. And this is your only one chance that you can actually do this right. So you should... You should find a way to make yourself happy, you see. And I think that's the essence of your of every woman's attractiveness. So when you find that centered, when you find yourself, you know, I know it's very cliche, I'm sorry to use this, but but I I find it so true when you actually find, you know, where you are, who you are, you know, you become so attractive, you know, and for some reason, I mean that's when the stars start to align, you see. Yeah, so what happened to me was pretty much, um, pretty much what happened. Uh, pretty much in this scenario, in fact, um, I wasn't planning to get married because I I reached um almost at that point I was reaching at that age where you know you've seen it all. You went to the circus. You've seen you know all of these things. You see, so it 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 gets very um disheartening, you know. And you kept seeing friends who are on your Facebook posting pictures of their children, their babies being born, you know, and yeah, it sort of like puts you in a little bit of, um, maybe it happens for them, it might not happen for me. Of course, I mean, there are days when I, I brood about that, you know, oh, maybe I, if I should have done this earlier, I could have, you know, my first baby already that is going to school, you know, those kind of thoughts, you know, it, it goes through your mind. But I, I think, I think, you know, although I mean, I'm only human. I do spend my time thinking about that. But at the same time, it's like, I, I do believe that I'm not as powerless. So there's a lot of things that in, within my life that is still within my control, which I, I tend to actually explore on. So 
and that was what happened. So at that, at that point of time, you know, you know, in Singapore, because you you can only buy property uh, after you are 35 or something. So I embarked on this very big program. I always have a big project for myself. So uh, my biggest project back then before this was to actually, um, you know, finish my master's. So I did that already. So my next project at that point was to buy my house. <laughs> So I wanted to own a property by myself. So I basically, that's what I did. And I, I land myself in a place that is quite comfortable professionally. I enjoy my work. I'm, I'm actually a business development person with uh, a law firm. And, uh, you know, being in that position, you know, you are pretty much dedicated uh, in terms of your time, you know, invested in work, you know, but uh, financially, you do find yourself in a quite comfortable place. And that was what I did. So I went uh, house hunting, property. So it, basically, all my all my efforts, all my uh, focus, you know, is work, and you know, owning this piece of property. So I, you can say that it's a little bit like um, I don't know whether you watch this uh, movie um, where I think um, he 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 bought a house and he built the house for her. And then eventually she came back. I'm not so sure. I forgot the the, the title of the is it notebook right now. Is it the uh, notebook? Yes, it's the notebook. Yes. <laughs> so okay, I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to actually be a little bit corny about that. But at the same time, it's like you know I I I just felt that you know I tried to make it happen for so long. You see, with some of the relationships I had previously. And it didn't work, you know, and most of the time what bumps me out is that, you know, it's really because it's, it's, it's not within my control, how I, how the other person behave or whether the other person wants to continue in that relationship or not. Yeah, so, I mean, of course, I mean, I have my share of heartbreaks and all that, but at the same time, you know, during that period of time when I, I was single, I find myself uh, drawn to all these projects. So when at that point, just as the time when I was uh, signing, you know, for my mortgage uh, and doing the down payment for this property, and that was when uh, I also had an offer to uh, spend at least six months in Sydney for my job. And it was during this crazy period of time, that was when I met my husband. <laughs> Okay, before we go into the interesting story of how you met your husband, I, I, I just wanted to like um, just jump in and just, just pick up a couple of things that you shared from, you know, from all this, right? I always believe um, in being, I, I mean, I always believe like identity is very important, like who you are, you know, wh whether you find your identity in your faith. You, where you, where, whatever it is, right? You need to have a strong foundation of who you are. And I felt like for you, right? You were not driven. Like I think a lot of times, what happens is when a person is not fulfilled, like they don't find that I, I don't have a relationship, like I want. What happens is they feel like they kind of drown themselves in a job, a career. So they are keeping themselves busy, but in fact they are drowning. Because they feel like I don't want to face a day where I have to go and see all my friends getting married and all that. I just draw myself. That is mm. not the right attitude. Like for no one thing is her her attitude was different, totally different. It was she was very sure of who she was. She wasn't like it wasn't a shout for help. It was more of herself, like being fulfilled. Okay, let me do things to keep myself occupied. But she wasn't drowning in them. So she was really, I think she was just very happy, secure in herself when the right person come along? Well, um, I <laughs> must say that, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 I must say that I, I was actually jaded, uh, you know, to actually, you know, come to that point where, you know, I don't think that sparks fly, you know, and fairy tales are just, you know, what you see in mm. movies and all those things, you see, which is, you know, it doesn't really turn out that way, you see, but sometimes it turns out you know, quite unexpectedly. I think when we when we watch shows, romantic rom coms, last last time we had shows like Notebook and all that, so it was a different <laughs> different kind of romantic ideal. Now yeah. we have Korean <laughs> drama, so where a lot of people watch Korean dramas, and Korean drama sometimes they hype it up so much, right? Like yes. we women watching it feel like this. We have this false expectation already. We feel like this is what happens in a relationship like I always tell my friends right just because someone ties your shoelace right doesn't mean that person is qualified to have a relationship with you I mean 
<laughs> you know, we have all these false <laughs> ideas of like, oh, we want, but sometimes that's really not reality. And no, it doesn't. I don't know whether you have a checklist. Like I used to have like checklists of what I want in a person, you know, like some mm-hmm. years ago. And and sometimes when we put all this in a box, right, we are just kind of like taking out a lot of things. And when you expect that package, right, it will come in a most unexpected, like it won't even, unless you are, you got rid of all these um, ideas and what you want, your expectations and all that, then you are in the right frame of mind to open your eyes and see what's ahead of you. Because if not, you will totally miss it because it's not going to come in a package that, um, to say, hey, it, it exactly looks like what you want. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know what, you know what's interesting instead of keeping a list of what I expect you know the love of my life or my future husband is going to be I actually wrote a list of what I want to be at a certain age at a different age uh, as I as I reach that uh, particular age what I expect to achieve during that time so rather than you know imagining uh, and putting it on a list of what I want in someone I put in a list what I want to be and I, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, when you mentioned that, you know, you have that, this, because I don't recall having a list like that about, you know, my, um, what I expect to have in another person, but rather what I expect of myself. Uh, I guess maybe that's a different approach, I guess, you know, to, to sort of like um, psychologically, you know, prepare, you know, or maybe in a, something that to fulfill you in another way, I guess. Yeah, because I I just realized that, you know, at a very young age that, you know, whatever that you want of someone, I mean, it might just, you know, some of the, you might take, you know, several boxes there. But, you know, in essence, sometimes, you know, you don't really have that kindred spirits or souls that you intend to meet, you see. So you might find, honestly, you might find it in even a child or another woman, you see, like for you, like for example, I mean, we have this kindred thing going on, right? But, yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, but yeah, but at some time, it's like, you know, you meet this in different forms, you see. So, you know, I, I must say that some of my most uh, important kindred spirits are actually women, women who are my teachers, you know, my bosses, you know, and mm. it's, it's just different. And I, I know that, I, I, I know that, you know, we are looking for that, you know, that kind of connection, right? Um, and it doesn't necessarily fall into like your partner or your husband, it doesn't necessarily fall into that. I think that comes with experience. That comes yeah, with experience so, and journey. Yeah, your journey. Yeah, to be able to change. recognize that, right? So yeah. what I do is that, you know what, Shivon, what I do is that I usually pray that, you know, if I ever come across such kindred souls, right, I hope that God will give me the, the wisdom, you know, to see that. So it doesn't really matter whether it's like my partner, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter, you see, because I've already found those people and yeah, yeah and that's, that's the joy that I derive, you know, knowing that these kindred spirits are around me, you see, and that's what motivates me. You mentioned, you know, more specifically in the context of, um, you know, relationships, right, and uh, marriage and all that. Yeah, I, I must say that my husband doesn't fall into that typical up with, uh, or even um, <laughs> one thing. Is that is the most like it's so exciting? Like, I think I've known her for so long. Like, you know, you you know her taste, you know, like, what she likes. And it was, like, complete opposite when I actually, after so many years, I heard from her and she said, oh, I'm getting married. I mean, of course, I was so happy for her, so thrilled to see, like, you know. Your, and and that's one of the things, right, that your kindred friends would feel. They would be happy for, you know, for you, even if they are not in a relationship. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we, we yeah. are not, like, competing against each other like we are friends and you know you want yeah. the best for your friend and yeah 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 definitely so i'm going to let Noor have like tell us about her journey of how she actually like you know met her husband like it's it's a very very interesting story <laughs> <laughs> well okay um so you know we we are all you know uh, in this times you know there's so many channels right mm-hmm. that we can meet our future uh, you know uh, boyfriends or spouses or what but um, yeah, I must say that you know I I don't really I don't really like to meet people within my my professional circles as well, and because you know I've passed you know that 
that that era where I'm studying and you know meeting men who are on campus, you know, it it, it sort of like um, narrows down my choices, you see, of um, men that I can meet. And unfortunately, I mean, uh, within my own community, most of the men of my age are all married. Most of them are married. They are or married or divorced, you know. And uh, you know, it's, it's it's becoming very hard. And because you know, you you are of a, a woman of a certain age as well. So you know, I I think I was uh, I was I was trying to actually uh, find a way to you know. Um, navigate that. So I actually asked my parents, do you think you can find somebody for me, you know? So I'm I'm asking my parents whether they can match pick me because they found each other and they've been together for for like forever, you know, but they are lucky, you know, they are just like living across from each other. So okay, let's let me just fall in love and go across and fall in love and get married and have four children. That's what my parents did. So they, I don't think they know how difficult this is, you see. Uh, so yeah, and I, I actually, I, I have to admit that, you know, if not for the modern technology of um, social media or dating apps, you know, all these things, I would never have met my husband. So, you know, it, it just so happened that, okay, I, I, I've, I've been trying on uh, this particular social media and dating app for a while. So I've been chatting with quite a few guys, you know, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't so, you know, it's, be it's becoming almost like a, a channel, you know, full of um, very fake people, you know, people who are out there to get you, you know, or trying to trick you, you know. So, and people are, because it's, it's, it's behind the internet, right? So, you don't, you don't really have to show who you really are, you know. You just have to show versions of yourself or maybe, you know, show some people what you want them to see. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of things there that is it makes very difficult so i understand what all the women out there are going through right now yeah so what happened was, was that i was so jaded i decided to just um delete most of these apps you know and just stay away from it for a while and it was during this time you know that i was trying to close the property and all those things so i was busy and then you know i came across a book uh you know by robert green and it's entitled the art of seduction so, you know, it's, this guy, he wrote uh, really, it's not about uh, finding somebody, you know, right? he's not a relationship guru or anything like that. His, his story is about power. So he wrote a book with 50 Cent, uh, Curtis Jackson, on uh, how to survive on the streets. But there's this one particular book that he wrote, which is The Art of Seduction, which is, to me, is just so interesting. Because, you know, I, I, uh, I think it's about this time that I actually... Uh, there was one particular Sunday. Let me just finish the story of uh, how I how I meet my husband, right? And then I will go back to this particular other story. Maybe you can ask me questions about that. So, uh, you know, when I there was one Sunday that I decided to just download again uh, some of these dating apps, you see, because I was just bought one Sunday. You know, you're lonely, you're at home, you're watching movies, and after finish watching a few movies, then you're like, okay, maybe I just let me see who's online, you know. <laughs> So I just download again. And you know, some of these dating apps, they have um, criteria, right? So who are you looking for, men or women? You know, uh, are you looking as friends or as, uh, do you, wanna, uh, you know, what is the age group that you want to um, filter it to, you know? So what happened was that previously, as I, I, I've actually deleted it, you know, all those things have not been um, affected yet because I once I downloaded it, I for, simply forgot to change the... The criteria or the filter. I just download it for fun, right? Because I wasn't planning to stay on it. I just, ah, it's gonna bore me again, you know, later on. So, and that was what happened, you see, because I didn't change the age filter. That was how my husband's profiles come through to me. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, it, uh, my husband is a young guy, and he he just came through to, because of that. Uh, because of that one, I don't know, serendipitous instance where I decided, okay, maybe I shouldn't, you know, I, I just forgot, I just forgot to change the filter, that's all, and that was how he came through to me, so if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have met him at all, and considering how far our circles are professionally, socially, you know, uh, I think there wasn't, there's, gonna, there's not going to be any chance at all for us to meet, you see, if it's not because of this particular channel, so, 
So yeah, that that was how I I met. But I didn't really wanted to meet him because he doesn't fall into the age group that I that I would think would make um uh you know would be somebody who's interested to get married or have children or something like that. So. So that's the reason why, you know, when I first connected with him, it was more to chat about, you know, just nothing, you know, nothing specific, you know, just about, okay, what do you do, you know, and uh, what do you like, you know, what kind of food, you know, do you eat? So it was so simple and it was nothing, right? So I, I plan to keep it that way. I didn't have any intention to meet him. But I think he said, okay, why don't we, why don't we just, why don't we just meet? And I think the first time I almost didn't meet him because I told my friend how old my husband was. And then she said, hmm, I don't think that's going to be, that's going to work, you know. Uh, but he's waiting, you know, we are, because, I, I, because we were waiting at this station where it's a central station where I need to still pass through before I go home. So he was waiting at that station. And when I passed, when I actually reached that station, my friend had to go, you know, ahead of a journey which is from the same uh, train but I had to cross over but which means I have to stop at that particular station right so I had a choice to go ahead and you know um, you know, to meet him or to go home you know <laughs> so I told him that you know I don't think this is going to work you know I know that you are, we are supposed to meet now but I think I will just make my way home you see because I don't think there's a future here you know they said, oh, don't do that, you know, I'm on my way already, you know, um, why don't you just, um, uh, just meet, you know, there's no harm, right, I mean, we are going to be friends, I said, okay, okay, I think, oh, okay, then, so I was just like, okay, I think I just, I just, you know, decided, okay, let's just go up, you know, because the, the cafe that we are supposed to meet is just above the station, right, so that was what I did, and the first time I saw him, I was like, mm, this is not going to be a second date from here on, <laughs> Expected that uh you know this happened, but I I I guess you know it's it's it, there are a number of factors that that came into being for it to actually happen, and certain things that has already been there all the while. Yeah. So what do you think of the story? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Like when she shared it with me, I was like. <laughs> I, I, I feel like personally, right, um, I, I find that it's really sometimes the timing is, the, the right timing works. And I won't say timing as in like, oh, like the stars have to be aligned. And no, I think the timing is really right. It's your own individual thing. I think if just say that uh, Noel was not in a position at that time ready for that relationship, like she still had some things that she needed to work on herself, right? It wouldn't have worked as well. She wouldn't probably even meet that person or even like yes. she would have just deactivated the app maybe after that. Like we do we do that all the time, right? We just activate, we, we talk for a while and then maybe on that night itself, we just deactivate it. Yeah, because we, you yeah. know, we just lose that interest. But I think yeah. because she was like in that position where she was really like... um a lot of things were happening in her life and she was being fulfilled in every area of her life. So I think that's when it was so timely for her. Like, it, she was like, I, I felt like she was really ready. She was really ready. Maybe she might but thing in her heart that I'm ready when I'm at this age, but sometimes she is, you know, we go through all our own shares of um, challenges, right? We have our emotional uh, ups and downs. We, so sometimes we are really not as ready as we think we are. And that will actually jeopardize even the best relationship that you have if yeah. it's not at the right time. It's true, it's true. Because um, it's not like as if I don't have any previous relationships before mm. I do, you know. And it seems like those factors actually are more matching, you see, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you, know, profession, uh, you know, the profession or the intellectual level or the emotional connection. It seems like all those things are there, but sometimes because of the timing and, you know, whether the other person is ready or not, you know, it can result to whether the relationship ends or whether the relationship continues. So, you know, and it, it, it matters so much, you see, that both of you want the same thing as well. So if there's, I mean, just because, you know, there's a lot of uh, good connection, emotional attachment and all those things, you know, um, it doesn't mean that 
it's going to end up in a, in a you know in a marriage or in a long term relationship because you know it might just be that two people can be so you know uh, made for each other but mm-hmm. because they want different things in life and where they are in life in getting that you know um it will affect you know whether you will remain in the relationship or not yeah so i i i guess it's it's a matter of um what you want as well yeah and i i think at that given point i must say that you are right you see shivon because there's a lot of factors where you know it puts me in a place where i i started thinking about okay um important things like okay well, do i want to be in a relationship or in a marriage you know i i think what was important to me at that point is um i do want to have children so you know and you know being in a more being a more independent woman i did ask you know the possibility if i can just you know do it by myself you see uh having a child by myself as a single mom i did consider that um but i think i asked my mom about that and unfortunately she said that you need to be married to the person who contributes that genetic material unfortunately so <laughs> so i i said okay you know so that's an option that i can explore um yeah and i i do think that you know there's a lot of factors where uh you know it's it definitely you know a difficult difficult journey to actually get get here but i must say that i didn't get here because i i work on it or anything i think it's just um so many different factors you see but i think what i must say to um your audience or the women out there is just you you should never always always believe in yourself and put yourself first you know most of all Yeah, I know that it's a little bit selfish, you know, but I think if you make yourself to the person that you are, if you're happy where you are, all these things will actually come to you. you see. It will it will attract people like nobody's business. It's just kind of crazy, you know, because the more yeah. I felt that I if I actually develop myself and I I'm happy, right? So that's where the positive energy probably comes from. And because of that, you know, you tend to draw people you know in a in a very dif- different ways you see that in your even in your dating uh in your dating journey you know and i i'm not sure where i read this but i read this in a book um one time it's like uh because this psychologist was actually saying that how is it possible that when um a narcissistic person when he walks in right and he's looking for a partner you know to pick into an in an emotionally abusive relation for example like how does he pick partner and it pick and he picks it based on the person's insecurity in vulnerability sometimes you think that you you don't you don't show it but it's really like this um lack like, for lack of a better word i would say like an aura something like that that actually kind of attracts it and when you are in a very and when you actually don't have that anymore like you're not feeling insecure you're happy you're just full of yourself and you enjoy do, doing what you're doing you notice that sometimes right you don't get taken in easily as well like if you like mm. you shared about fake personalities you know there's so yes. times when you are in a better position right you look at one um one profile and the messages and you just go like nah it's not for me you mm. delete it but when you are in a vulnerable position even something um you don't you miss out on all the red flags you never see the mm. red flags you only see what yeah. you want to see So it really comes yeah. down to a point of like how secure you are, how confident you are, you know, how yeah. happy you are as a person that you don't need someone else to complete you. Yeah, because you see, you, it takes one to know the other, right? So you mm. tend to attract, yeah. you know, the like-minded ones, and isn't mm. that what you want? You know, you want to be able to, you know, be with somebody who is pretty much a, you know, a reflection of yourself, or at least, you know, someone that you know that. you can definitely be with you know and this is not just somebody who you see you know whenever you want to see him or her you know at any given time you're going to be with this person for a very long time and you're going to see him or her on a daily basis you know so it's it, it's just it just have to be it has to be you know um something that is off you you know to be able to attract you see those people yeah but um, i mean being having said that it doesn't mean that you cannot work on it you still have to be yeah. op- open yourself you know to put yourself out there as well and you know just because you know you feel at one point you know or you didn't meet the right one you know it doesn't mean that you wouldn't meet 
the right person, you know, coming, you know, down the road, you see. So I guess, you know, I, my dad always mentioned this, you see, as long as you are alive, you know, you should never give up hope, you see, because we still have our our whole lives to live, you see. And as long as you are living, breathing, you know, hope is all, you know, hope, hope you should never give up hope. Yeah. So I, it's I guess also not a numbers, um, like you know that like the part that you mentioned about not giving up hope, right? It's also mm-hmm. the part that I think a lot of times people feel very jaded is because they feel like you know there's a lot of wrong talks going on about relationships, right? Like you have it a lot more these days because people are doing online dating. So they talk about you need to get your numbers up. And for me, it's like um when I first heard it, right? When I I started doing different um, you know, I tried different methods to see what mm. works for me. And there was one author who actually said, oh, it's a number higher, but sometimes that is so emotionally draining because at mm. times you talk to so many multiple persons, you can't even remember who you are talking to. But I <laughs> <Yeah>. think... <laughs> it's not good. It's not good, you know. It's, it's like... Good. Yeah, I, I, I guess yeah, you, you can't be doing it for the sake of doing it either, you see. So, you know, I, I, I just think that there are some there are some that uh some of the men that I met on these uh channels, you see, which we are still friends now. So I mean rather than you know just hoping that you land like the love of your life that you're gonna get married, you know, I I still am friends with some of them, which is kind of interesting, right? I mean, uh, I'm still in connection with them and some of them they were working here for a while and then they they left, you see, but I'm still in touch with them. So, you know, even I married, you know, oh, I did tell them, oh, I, I met somebody, you know, and I'm getting married. So, oh, but they were so happy and they are still keeping in touch. You know, we are connected on some of uh, the social medias out there, you know. So, you see, it doesn't really, I guess you must be able to, um, through all this motion, right? It has to be something, it's not a numbers game, like what you said, which is right, Shivon. You, I guess you, you also need to be interested, right, in the other person. I mean, it's not just, oh, hi, what's your name, H, you know. It, it, it just doesn't make sense, is it? Because you should be able to show that you are interested in the other person before the other person will be able to show that to you. Intentional about it, right? Like sometimes, you know, instead of just, I think that's why you get disappointed so easily. I mean, if you just say everyone just tries to like, I'm going to do a numbers game, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to talk to many people. So you're not being intentional. I think intentional in a way, I would say like, you know what you like, you know what you want. So sometimes don't need to compromise on your standards. Like a lot of, I, I've heard even people say that if you think that you are not, if you're not, if you are like maybe, average looking you shouldn't look for a good looking guy which is i think doesn't make sense no it if that's really the case then i wouldn't be married by now <laughs> <laughs> yeah because because i honestly i mean i i wouldn't have dreamt that i would you know uh marry somebody so much younger than myself yeah, yeah so you know if that's the case you know i wouldn't have gotten married you see so that, that's the thing you see you shouldn't i i think what is important is that you have to be interested in you know who the person is right because you want to know the person so i mean all these other things that are outside like who the what is the person working as how much they're earning whether they own properties you know these are just details you know but in essence you know the person who they are you see that's the one that that is wonderful, right? That is a mystery, you know? And it keeps you thinking, hmm, who is this person, you know? So the more you talk, like, like you, Shibon, I mean, you are one fascinating person. You know, as I got to know you, you know, uh, you know, it's knowing the person inside, right? That is the most um, interesting part of this whole journey of dating, you know? I mean, I, I but I, at the same time, I do appreciate the um, little details as well. I mean, of course, I mean, um, you know, the person has to, uh, be able to support himself, you know. <laughs> so those are the things that it comes later, I guess. But mm. in essence, you know, what is important is that okay, you need to know uh, who the person is, you know. And then after that, that little details, whether it's good or bad, you know, that I guess will be you know to understand the context better of why the person is the way the person is. But you know, to to make, to talk about the numbers game, I guess it defeats the purpose, right? Because you're, you're yeah. supposed to know each and everyone. So if you are going by the numbers, you know, you don't know anybody, you forgot who, which conversation you have, 
whether with this person or that, then it defeats the whole purpose of getting to know somebody. For some woman who actually went around, because I think for what he did was, um, I can't really remember the actual title of the book, but because he had this single woman who come up to him and said there wasn't any single man around her. So he, he took it as a challenge. He, he said that, how can you be so sure you have no single man around you? She said, yes, I've actually gone through like my whole social circle, my professional circle, there's really no one. So he gave, her to, he gave that to her as a challenge. Like, go and get five new numbers a day. Mm. You know, I don't care how you get it. Like, you know, as long as you know the first person, the name, and you have enough information to find them on a social media platform and get in touch with them, that's all you need to know. But you can meet them in a shop house, a coffee place, a office, anywhere, as long as you get, uh, and don't even go to the next stage of whether they're single or interested or whatever. Just get to know. And that broaden her, the scope. Because the thing is, mm. we live in that small context and because it's a lie that we tell ourselves, like there's really no good men out there. And then you have Jerry Halliwell singing It's Raining Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, right? Just because, just because you know, you, you want to know the essence of somebody, all the deep stuff, you know, doesn't mean that you don't have to accompany that with your own, you know, uh, work, you know, to actually... To work through it, you see, um, you know, like what uh, the numbers thing is is a good is a good guide, you see. I mean, you can't be sitting at home and hoping that the love of your life will find you there. I mean, it doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, yeah, so you, it has to come together, right? It it has to, you know, just because you are looking for someone. I mean, of course, you need to, you know, put in the num the you know the effort as well because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just about merging the two together and finding your way around it, right? But, I mean, it has to start with a good um, goal or intention. I mean, I mean, you don't really need to stop, start with, like, say, for example, you don't need to start with, okay, this, this date, hopefully I can meet somebody, you know, along the way. Because if once you start that way, you are in for a lot of disappointment. Yeah, so I guess that's how you need to be able to manage your expectations as well because, um, you know, you might just meet uh, somebody, you know, in other channels or not, you know. It could be any, ever different, but you just couldn't, you know, predict, you see, or you cannot just set yourself up for disappointment by hoping at every date, you know, that this is going to be the one. Yeah, that's just a wrong way of... Um, you know, looking at this whole thing, yeah. It's nothing mm. for some women to hold on to, right? Because they have put in so much of emphasis and weight on having a relationship. Because I think for some women, it's so crucial. There are women that I've met, right? They cannot do without a relationship. They have to have a relationship. Um, mm. So that becomes like, they are, you know, that becomes like, it's so important to them, so vital to them, right? So it doesn't really matter. And for those kind of um women right so they they just it, it just doesn't make a d- difference they need to just meet someone and you know and they and they want to have a relationship like you know even if it's not right or what they will just go ahead and do it so it really comes down to the fact of you knowing yourself and being confident of yourself so you don't you don't you avoid all this um disappointments and you avoid expectations because for women in this category that i've i've, I've uh, put a like labeled it right this woman will go into any any place and look at any guy and say that okay this is potential life partner this is potential husband material so they are actually kind of like assessing already you know so imagine you go on a date right you, they are already assessing the person like okay how many children can i have with this person like yeah, okay, how much know? is your net worth <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, 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 and, and that is that is why um i feel that a lot of a high percentage of women, right? Especially when you get as you get older, and you feel like you you do have a rush to get um to get attached to get into a relationship, right? You kind of um just want to get it uh, over and done with. There's some people that just you know go into a date and just ask the first time, like you know what I want to be married. So are you ready to be married? Like it's it's mm. just too far. So you want to really like kind of pace yourself. You want to enjoy the journey. It doesn't really matter at which age or which season in your life you are in. You know, mm-hmm. you want to enjoy yes. the whole process. And and when you do that, you are setting up yourself for less disappointments. 
And even mm, if it doesn't true. work out, it doesn't affect you anymore because you weren't placing all your hopes on that particular relationship. Yes, agreed. Yeah. So that's why it's important, you see, how you start with every journey of your relationship that you are trying to, to build, you know, whatever, whatever reasons that you are trying to connect, you see, it has to start with something genuine from inside, you know. Yeah, because when you sift through everything, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you want you want to be able to, um, you know, spend because we only have one. For, for me, is like the moment when I think about such things. What is important to me is that I have one life to live, and you know, this is just my time. You know, that I'm going to spend on earth. You know, and it has to be with some the people that mattered the most, right? And and because of that, you know, you keep yourself real and genuine. And people always, without fail, you see, will always recognize that. And that's how you draw people and you meet people and you build lasting relationships. So, yeah, I mean, I have my, I have my, you know, the times when I fall or the times when I'm sad and all those things, you see. But, you know, I, I guess, you know, there are some things that can never change. So that part of me that is genuine is, I guess, is the key, you see, to actually attracting those kind of quality relationships that you want. Yeah, and yeah, so I think that would be my, my, my whole, you know, being and entire being centers around that. Yeah. Is there a quote that you live by that you hold on to? Uh, I, I think when I was very young, I mean, I was exploring writing and I think there's, there's a lot of uh, words out there that inspired me, um, you know, but I would think that, you know, there is, um, the one thing that I, I find real is that, um, you know, you should always be true to yourself and, you know, uh, you have to have faith and hope, uh, you know, as long as, you know, you live, with, you know, uh, on this earth and you should never give up. Yeah. So this is the most important things to live by, you see, because it's like, um, I know that, you know, we are in a pandemic situation right now, you know, it seems like everything is not going to end. But, you know, if you look through history, you know, things come and every, even this shall pass, right? Isn't that in the Bible? And, you know, all these things, you know, um, it will, it will come to an end, you know, somehow. Yeah, so that's why, you know, every single moment that we live through it is, is just how we make the best of it, yeah. And as we are coming to the end of the segment, right, I mean, I think we talked a lot more and I, and I really like that because our topic, right, although it's for single women and for women looking to find a relationship, we really focused on not, you know, we didn't like to focus on topics that is very common out there. Like, what are the techniques that you use to get hold of someone? Like, you know, how do you groom yourself to make yourself look better? But we really talked about your own emotional state of being. How do you be confident? How do you keep yourself busy during this season? What can you do to improve yourself, um, to better mm-hmm. yourself while you're waiting for someone? At the same time, right, going to, when you go on a dating relationship or when you're on dating apps, how do you be intentional about it? So we covered so much of things, right? So... Um, like as we are coming to the end of the section, you know, what would you, um, what kind of practical advice, right, would you give to single women out there during this, uh, you know, who are also like on this journey of trying to make someone? Uh, I think I think what is most important is that you know, um, you know, as women, we have so many you know concerns and all these things. What is important is that you should always put yourself first, you know, I mean, and make sure that you invest in yourself more. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, at, 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 you know, relationships come and go or it ends, whether you want it or not, sometimes by, by, uh, by your own, by both the willingness of both to end the relationship or sometimes, you know, sometimes love is simply lost, you know, some, sometimes, and, and then, you know, people, pass on, you know, and, you know, those, those are the losses that you can never um, replace, right? So at the end of the day, what is there will, that will remain is you. So, you know, I, I think what is important for all the single girls out there is to just, you know, make sure that, you know, you, you are happy with who you are and invest in yourself, you know. Um, it doesn't matter whether, you know, um, 
how many how much time has passed you know it has to be like at the end of the day you look at yourself in the mirror and you are happy with who you have become and whether you can sleep at peace at night you know uh, and with that you know you'll be surprised you see that you know that draws people in the most cosmic ways that is unexplainable yeah so you know you have to be uh genuine and that's i i think something that is missing a lot in our daily lives right now yeah and yeah that's that's what i think would be my best advice to most uh, single girls out there i mean you can see like um most of these movies and all that that gives you all these you know methods you know but i mean there are some truths to it i'm not saying that not all of it doesn't work yeah but uh work on yourself first and i guess you know before once that happens you know i think you will figure it out soon enough you know how you can actually meet the person that is your your soulmate or your kindred you know and you know or somebody that you know that you can be with for the rest of your life and yeah that's my best advice that i can give <laughs> looking at my uh, my own journey actually yeah I think that's really very good advice and I do hope that for single women who are watching this right you know um, like don't be discouraged or don't even be disheartened don't think that you know that's not going to be it's not going to happen to you sometimes right I, I, I always believe that um, good things really comes to those who wait and when that thing comes to pass right like I was watching yesterday um, I think a video clip or something and it shows us what it talks about is for sometimes we don't appreciate um something unless we know that's like we are lacking it like for example when you really fully understand the really the, the meaning and how important a relationship is when you finally get into one you will value the person more and you will appreciate the person a lot more because you know what it means to have that relationship because a lot of times people take it for really take it for granted you know, when it comes easy, yes. sometimes you just take the other person for granted. So I think sometimes there's always a learning journey and that starts from you um, because it's no longer like um, like what you would say, it's two halves and then forming one whole heart. It's basically two complete person coming together because you are not looking to the other party to fulfill you. You have to be fulfilled yourself because the other party is not yes. the one that's going to give you the happiness. No, unfortunately, I mean, it all comes from the inside, right? Your happiness. Yeah. So, yeah, begin there. And you, I guess when you, you find that, you know, you'll never go wrong. Yeah. And so, thanks so much, Noor, for joining me on this, um, you know, on The Living Room and for really sharing your heart and, and just be really brave about it, you know, like, you know, not, I think one of the things that um, I really appreciate about women like you is you have a story and you're not ashamed to share it. I think that, that's why a lot of people um, don't, you know, when we don't share uh, what happens to us, our challenges, other people can't learn from it. And we have our, in ourselves so much of experience, so much of knowledge, right? And you can imagine how much of women watching it would have benefited just by doing this. Like even, even if we impact one person, right? One woman who feel like, okay, you know, after watching this, I'm going to go and do something better with my life. I think we've done something. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, I, I must say that. Uh, yeah, I did ask my, uh, my husband. Is it okay if I were to share the story? You see, and I say, yeah, just as long as you make me look good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but I, 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 I think that yeah, all these stories need to be told. You see, and uh, you know that's how that's how we know that we are not alone, right? Yeah, yes, that's true. Times when you know we are stuck here, you know. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes listening to these stories, we know that, you know, there's people out there, you know, who who's probably on the same journey as us, you know, and you draw strength and inspiration from that. And, you know, it could be just ordinary women. I mean, who am I? I'm, I'm no one, you see. And, yeah, I, I have this story to tell and share. And I know that there's so many women out there who have wonderful stories to tell as well. Yeah, it's just thank you, Shibon, for inviting me and sharing my my little story yeah hopefully it resonates well and yeah i do, i do hope that you know if there's any parts you know that uh that would be of um great 
uh, contribution in future, you know, I'll be happy to join you again. <laughs> Yes, we would uh, really love it. Like, I mean, if there's, um, I mean, I'll be happy to even do like question and answer section or something. So we'll, we'll just see how it goes in terms of like comments or feedback that's coming in. Sure. And I would probably love to do another section again. Maybe we can do something else different, another sure. topic or yeah. something. Yeah, that'll be quite fun. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Noor, for joining me. And thanks, viewers, for watching the show. Um, you know, Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Subscribe. Don't forget. Thanks, Yvonne. <laughs>